The region is bounded by y equals 0, y equals x squared, and x equals 2. The region is rotated about x equals 2. Find the volume generated by the region. You want to begin with a picture here so that you can label everything in the picture very clearly. It's really essential. Otherwise, it's hard to construct the math meaningfully. So I have here a coordinate system. Let's label things within the coordinate system. So first of all, x equals 2, you can imagine, is kind of like this line right there. That's x equals 2. Then y equals 0. What is that line? You can imagine that line, basically. In other words, it's the x-axis. So it's like the bottom right here, you see? So you can imagine this. Label it if you like. This is y is equal to 0. This line is x is equal to positive 2. And then you have to mark up y equals x squared. So that's basically a parabola, if you like. It's basically a curve that kind of looks like this, you see? So that's the situation. Let's label this. So this is y is equal to x squared for now. That's how you imagine the blue curve. The next stage in the process is to recognize, because we are rotating about x equals 2, in other words, the representative disks. You have to put those in there so you can visualize it. Look, that means a disk will look like this. Let's do the top of the disk also. It kind of looks like this. You see how the disk will look? That means, since that's the case, that the thickness of the disk, that vertical wall, falls parallel to the y-axis, which means this is dy. Okay, once that is dy, then you need to figure out the radius of the disk. Draw a line that goes, say, from here to here. Now, that's a constant value of 2 from the perspective of going along the x-axis. It's always 2 between the y-axis and that green line, always 2 units. And then this part right here, that part, well, that part changes depending on where you are along the curve and the value of y. So what does that mean? Take a look. In other words, you're going to take your y is equal to x squared, and you're going to recreate that as the square root of y is equal to x. This way. You need to see it this way because then, from the perspective of the y-axis, now y is the independent variable and x is the dependent variable. You choose y, you plug it into the square root, and you get a value of x. So that's what this is going to be now. Look, from that perspective, it's going to be the square root of y in this position right here. It's kind of hard to squeeze this in, but it fits about right here, okay? So that says the square root of y. And then the radius of this disk, that would be, that's this object right there, that bit of a length. Hopefully you can tell by looking at the picture that the radius... So the radius would basically be then be equal to 2 minus the square root of y. There's one last piece of information because we're going to be integrating along the y-axis. We need to know, like, what is it up to right here, see? Like, what is this up to right there? What we know is that the green line represents x equals positive 2. So you're going to do, when x has the value 2, you're going to have 2 squared, which is the value of y. In other words, y is equal to 4. So that means over here along the y-axis, the lower limit is 0. And the upper limit right there, that's equal to 4 in this position right here. See? Now that you have all of this gathered, you can actually do the integration. You're going to do a pi here, and then the definite integral that goes, say, from 0 up to 4. And the integrand will be this. 2 minus the square root of y, this quantity squared, and then dy this way. That's the setup on the integral using the picture. All right, then we can expand the integrand. So pi and then the definite integral from 0 up to 4 here. And that's going to be the following, 4 minus, so you're going to do 2 times the root of negative y double. That's 4 times the root of y. And at the end, the root of y squared is going to be just plus y, and then dy this way. And then down below, it's continuous, so pi, and then you're going to do the antiderivative, so 4y minus 4y raised to the 1 half plus 1 over, let's see, 1 half plus 1, and then plus 1 half here of y squared, and then you're going to evaluate this between the limits of 4 and 0 this way, then you continue down below. So pi and then plug in the 4, so 4 times 4 minus 4. Now you have to be really careful here because the fractions get a bit complex. So it's going to be 4 to the 1 half plus 1. That's 1 half plus 2 over 2. In other words, it's 3 halves. And the same thing in the bottom is going to be 1 half plus 1, which is 3 halves. And then plus 1 half, and it's going to be 4 squared. And the nice thing, luckily, is that when you plug in 0 as a lower limit, all of the terms with 0 will vanish. So that means this is our expression. We just have to simplify. So pi 16 minus 4 times... Now, this is like the square root of basically 4 raised to the third, if you like. That's a way to imagine it. And the 3 halves on the bottom, you can flip up top as 2 over 3 this way. And then you're going to have plus 4 squared, which is 16 over 2. Be kind of careful here so we don't make any mistakes. 
and then pi and then 16 minus 4 times 2 is 8 over 3. Now the square root of 4 is 2 and so it becomes 2 cubed this way. Okay, plus 16 divided by 2 which is 8 and then you have pi and then you have 16 minus 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 8 is 64 over 3 plus 8 and then you continue working on this. So pi 16 plus 8 is going to give you, let's see, 24 minus 64 over 3 and then you continue here across this way so pi then you're going to do 3 times 24 like this 3 times 24 over the 3 and then minus 64 over 3 and then it's going to give you here pi so that's going to give you 72 here over 3 minus 64 over 3 so that's going to give you here 72 minus 64 so that's going to give you 8 pi over 3 and that's really the answer Please leave a like, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I know these are toughies, but with practice you can learn them. Draw a picture, label everything in the picture very clearly. That's really important. I'll see you in the next video.